note, we're going to be welcomed this morning by Ella, who's going to welcome us in Welsh. Not a language I have. Go for it, Ella. I don't mind. Sorry, Dad, Teresa. I'm not sure English. Welcome. Uh, Welcome. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Welcome and good morning to you and to us all. Good morning, everyone. We gather together in this, uh, what is now becoming a familiar way, to worship God. Our call to worship is words from Isaiah chapter 56, verse 1 and 6 to 8. This is what the Lord says. Maintain justice and do what is right. For my salvation is close at hand, and my righteousness will soon be revealed. And foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it, and all who hold fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. The Sovereign Lord declares, He who gathers the exiles of Israel, I will gather still others to them besides those already gathered. We continue our worship with our first hymn, number uh, 255 in singing the faith the kingdom of god is justice and joy but jesus restores what sin would destroy <laughs> of adoration, thanksgiving, uh, and confession. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, whose light came into the world in the life of Jesus Christ, we worship and praise you. Father, we give you all the glory because we know that when the world was created, it was your light that brought order and peace into the darkness and the chaos. For the power of your sustaining light we worship and praise you now and forever. 
We give you thanks, Father God, for all your goodness to us, for the beauty of the earth. Thanks be to God, for the goodness of your providence to each one of us. Thanks be to God, for the love of family and friend. Thanks be to God, for the harvest of your spirit. Thanks be to God, for the good we all inherit. Thanks be to God. For the wonders that astound us, for the truth that still confound us, most of all that love has found us. Thanks be to God. We give you thanks for your light that has been shed into our lives by the love of your Son, Jesus Christ. Forgive us, Father, that we have on too many occasions shut out your light from our lives. Too often we have chosen to walk in the darkness of sin and have neglected or ignored you and your way. We have been selfish and followed our own desires. We have done the things that we wanted to do instead of doing the things that you wanted us to do. We have kept silent when we should have spoken out for you. and We kept ourselves back when we should have acted for you. Forgive us, Lord. Forgiving, Father, we are sorry for all the things in our lives that when placed in your light, we are ashamed of. Forgive us, Lord. Father God, may the light of your Son be shed abroad in our hearts, that we may always seek to do that which is right. Shine thou upon us, Lord, the world's true light, today. We ask this and all our prayers in and through the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Saviour, who taught us when we are gathered together to say uh, his prayer, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Our next hymn is number 351 in Singing the Faith. <coughs> in Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. <coughs> Oh 
light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on reading from Romans chapter 11 verses 1 to 2a and 29 to 32. I ask then, did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people whom he foreknew. Don't you know what the scripture says in the passage about Elijah how he appealed to God against Israel. For God's gifts and his calls are irrevocable. Just as you who were at one time disobedient to God have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience, so they too have now become disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound all men over to disobedience so that he may have mercy on them all. And our New Testament reading is from Matthew chapter 15, verses 10 to 28. Jesus called a crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them. But what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? He replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them. They are blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. Peter said, explain the parable to us. Are you still so dull? Jesus asked them. Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart and these defile them. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what defile a person, but eating what unwashed hands, but eating with unwashed hands does not defile them. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He replied, I will send only to the lost sheep of Israel. 
the woman came and knelt before him. Lord, please help me. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. In the last few weeks, we have looked at stories of Jesus healing the sick. But these are stories from the normal healing that Jesus did, and the differences present challenges to us as they did to Jesus. This story begins with Jesus travelling to Tyre. Got a map there, look, to see where Jesus would have travelled from, all the way up through Samaria, through Galilee, and up to Tyre, in a country that in those days was known as Syrophoenicia, part of Greek, part, part of Greece, part of all of that northern region of the Middle East. It was outside of the Jewish territory, but Tyre was a city of great importance and associated with the empire and Rome. And the whole area of that country was a former enemy of Israel. So why did Jesus go there? Perhaps to find some peace from all the crowds that had been following him. And in this strange place, he met this woman, Syrophoenician by birth. But her story is not to do with her nationality, but her religion. She's a pagan, not a Jew. So there is Jesus's first problem. In his hometown, he is doubted by his family. He is opposed by religious authorities, followed by crowds, all for the wrong reasons. Accompanied by disciples who don't fully understand him. And yet he's recognized by evil spirits and trusted by the desperate. This pagan woman flaunted the customs and tradition of the times by approaching Jesus to ask for help for her daughter. How is Jesus supposed to respond to that? I'm sure if we look at that story now, we think, well, it's obvious that Jesus is going to heal the child. But it was not a natural conclusion for that encounter. Women were not allowed to speak to men, especially men they didn't know. It was always a man who went to approach someone if their daughter needed healing. And you'll remember that from Jairus's daughter. It wasn't her mother that went to Jesus. It was Jairus himself. She was a pagan and not a Jew. And Jesus believed that he was sent to the Jews. So his response was not unexpected. It was just a little bit surprising. He says in respect of being sent to court at the court of the Jews, it's not right to take the children's bread and feed it to the dogs. But the woman, not backward in coming forward, points out rather boldly that even the dogs eat the crumbs under the master's table. A woman and a pagan she may be, but she was the mother of a child who was ill. She was not going to give up her daughter from being healed. 
she could not accept Jesus's inference that there was the only response from him was for the Jews. It did not have to be one or the other, but both could have access even if one is less important than the other. She accepts the humiliating position he has assigned to her. But will Jesus accept the different interpretation of his ministry? He heals the child. And Jesus' response opens up the kingdom of God to the Gentiles, to pagans, and to all the world. And it changes the scope of his ministry. This is a really important story on two levels. It shows us that Jesus recognised and gave hope to the Gentiles that at some point in his ministry, he would be for them as well as the Jews. The second level is that Jesus crossed national and religious boundaries to help someone in need. Jesus had to reflect on the purpose of God for his ministry. For the woman, it was a case of her sick child who needed healing. So Jesus crossed that barrier of nationality, religion, sex, tradition, and granted the healing in response to the woman's faith. As in the story of the Good Samaritan, Jesus risked all in order to save. So where does that leave us today? Where are our Syrophoenician women? Where are the pagans, the Gentiles, in need of Christ's healing? Where are those who are prepared to cross the divide of culture? religion and nationality that present themselves in front of us and ask for healing. There is a saying about brushing things under the table. Presenting, pretending they're not there or of any value. All my children have had great fun in making dens under the table a place to play away from the eyes of adults. Sometimes children and even adults hide under a table when they're frightened of thunder, noise, and sometimes from people of whom they are afraid. Dogs go under tables in the hope of receiving some morsel of food while the family eat. Jesus used this analogy, but do we push under the table in our lives those whom we don't like to associate with? Those people we think aren't like us? People who we don't want to associate with? Those who are of a different culture, tradition? ethnicity, language, and those we just look down on because we think we can. We still raise barriers that other people can't pass. How many barriers are erected in the name of Christianity to justify war and wholesale killing and the division of communities? In my lifetime, we have gone through Christian militiamen fighting Muslims in Lebanon. The problem of the Irish divide is about religion and nothing else. Many of the problems in this country and across the world continue on the grounds of religion and culture. So often we see today 
with pictures of personal and group attacks on minorities. The issue of colour in society and especially sport has raised its head again. And what are we doing to support black and minority people who are being abused? Who are the untouchable people of different culture and background in the area where we live? And do we try not to associate with them, but stick to our own type in our own churches? This is the challenge for us today in this story. Jesus is showing us in the healing of that child that we do not have to agree with someone else's theology, lifestyle, nationhood or outlook to meet their need. We have a responsibility to show the love of God to another human being. To support others in our communities regardless of race or colour or religion. The coronavirus has divided us and joined us together. Will we go back to our churches and close our doors and remain as we've always done? Or will we be given the courage to be seen as the Christians following their master more clearly, welcoming all and caring for all, regardless of who they are, because we are all God's people. Amen. We're now going to sing from Seeing the Faith number 251. Jesus Christ is waiting, waiting in the streets. No one is his neighbour, all alone he is. Listen, Lord Jesus, I am lonely too. Make me, friend or stranger, fit to wait on you. Jesus Christ is waiting, waiting in the streets. No one is his neighbor, all alone he is. Listen, Lord Jesus, this I'm lonely too. Make me friend or stranger, fit to wait on you. <coughs> Jesus Christ is raging, raging in the streets, where injustice rivals and Listen, Lord Jesus, I am lonely too. If the clean come causes, let me rage with you. Jesus Christ is healing, healing in the streets. In those who suffer, touching those he greets. Listen, Lord Jesus, I have pity too. Let my care be active, feeling just like you. <coughs> Jesus Christ is dancing, dancing in the streets. When it's sign of hatred, he with love defeats. 
Let us pray. Loving, compassionate and just God, the Syrophoenician woman sought your help. She loved her daughter so much, she was so desperately in need that she wouldn't give up till she had her answer. Lord, may we learn from this woman to wait on you expectantly, patiently, persistently, doggedly. Grant us the courage of our convictions when we truly believe we are doing your will. Loving and forgiving God, you have made us who we are, each of us unique and in your image. We rejoice at our diversity and yet we recognise that this world does not treat all people equally. At times, we've all felt like outsiders, like we did not belong. And yet we know that you love all people equally, regardless of skin color, gender or social status. May we not be complicit in a value system that confers privilege and power to one group over another. We pray your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven and offer ourselves once more to live out your coming kingdom of equality and justice in our lives, in our churches and in our communities. May our churches become places of welcome for all where each human soul is valued and where equality in Christ is a reality in our midst. We pray for our communities. Where there is division, may we bring restoration. Where there is inequality, may we bring justice. Where there is powerlessness, may we lift up the broken hearted. Where there is damage, may we bring healing. We pray for people who find themselves without a home. Some may have lost their jobs or been forced to leave home by their parents. Others may have problems with drugs and alcohol or mental health. They may be sleeping on our streets or moving between the sofas of friends. For them, there are so many barriers to overcome. They seem to have so few rights. We thank you, Lord, that there are many charities who provide temporary shelter, food, the opportunity to work, and even counselling. However, injustices remain and homelessness is ongoing. We pray that governments will put in place policies designed to create an equal and fair society where everyone can receive the help they need to live a fulfilling and productive life. We pray for those who serve in the judicial system. Give them wisdom, integrity, courage and dedication so that they may discharge their duties faithfully. We pray for the police and all those who work in prisons. Grant them your protection and help them in all they do 
to be fair. And now we pray for all those in our families, church or community who are unwell at this time. We remember those whose mental health problems may leave them vulnerable, isolated and misunderstood. We pray for wise and committed therapists, for greater understanding and insight into the causes and treatment of mental health disorders and for patients among family members. We pray too for those suffering from physical, from physical illnesses, who must suffer constant pain, who wait anxiously for treatment, or who live with terminal illness. We pray, especially this morning, for Irvin, our brother in Christ, who has been taken ill. Be especially close to him right now, Lord. Comfort him and give him rest. We pray for his daughter, Ruth, and the rest of his family as they wait for news that they may know your protection love and peace at this time in a moment of quiet we remember those on our hearts at this time God of justice and mercy, we bring all our prayers to you, knowing that you hear us and respond in love and compassion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now we sing our final hymn together today, The Church of Christ in Every Age, beset by change but spirit-led must claim and test its heritage and keep on rising from the dead. Sing in the faith 415. and 
spread his liberating word. Let us pray. We go out today renewed and strengthened in faith, ready to serve you, Lord, and find in you the people we meet. We go out to follow you and our hearts. Lead us, Lord, in this coming week. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look on you with kindness and bring you peace. Amen.